Hey, um, I'm Liz. I run um, EmphasisCreative.com. We do graphic design and websites based in the northern burbs. Um, this is uh, somewhat technical, not too. Um, you have to see PHP, but not be real good at it. Um, so if you're comfortable with HTML and stuff, then that's great. Um, how many people have um, done some PHP? Okay. How many have made a child theme? Twenty eleven is um, a nice basic out of the box thing, um, but as you know, it looks kind of weird and spaced out and stuff, and hard to make a like a business website out of it. So what I've done is collected some tricks that I like to use to make it look the way I want. Um, I'm going to step through them, sort of cookbook fashion. Um, this is. It in all its glory. Um, I have a whoa, extremely wide website. Thank you, projector. All right, that's better. So I've loaded up a example site with um, some client content, and this is what it looks like out of the box. Got basic stuff in it. Um, first of all, to make a child theme, all you need to do is create a little folder like this one here, fill it with a style sheet and a screenshot. The screenshot just is your little thumbnail for in the interface, and all the style sheet has to have is name of your theme, child of template is 2011, and then you import the style sheet, the style sheet from 2011, and you're started. If I were to go and load that one up, it would look just the same because we haven't done anything yet. First thing I like to do, oh, we need to think about um, like mobile. One of the reasons I like to use 2011 is it's kind of mobile friendly. If you look at this out of the box in like an iPhone, it will stack nicely um, and not run anything off the page. Um, we're going to try to maintain that as we edit the site to what we want to be want it to be. Um, first of all, WordPress set up for like your basic business site. Um, set the home page to be a static page and then make another section for your blog site. And most people don't want their blog entries front and center. Um, permalinks, if you use this format, then the URLs will look all nice and company name slash about slash our team rather than post number equals question thing. Um, turn off the comments. Most people don't want comments on their business site and then it provides a hassle for uh, spammers too. Um, and then set your default blog category and set it to be news. Um, bunch of favorite plugins I like to use. Um, a contact form, fast secure contact form by Chalice is good. Um, widget logic to control which. Sorry, question. Will the uh, presentation be available on, on the web someplace? Yeah, I'll put it up. Okay, thank you. So, don't have to take all the notes. Um, category posts widget will let you just, just pull out the news or just pull out the events or something. Um, a simple image widget is good for little spot ads in your sidebar. Um, did a linkable title uh, text widget will let you link the title too, which the main one doesn't. Promo slider is a nice basic um, way to provide rotating images on the top. Um, and that sort of takes the place of the header images and, and 
is cooler. Um, special text boxes by Simple Lib, I've ne been able to hack that pretty nicely to make um, like daily specials or something kind of box. And Simple Quotes gives you a nice rotating, you know, happy customer quote box or something. Uh, all right, the first thing to do, uh, prepare the page um, rather than setting the background image and all of that in the user interface for WordPress. Um, I tend to just do it in the code. Um, so you can set a body tag, um, upload the images there. That is in here. All right, buddy, background, URL, images. Um, I put a image folder inside the theme folder, and then you can fill it with the things you want to easily point to. Uh, page, margin, zero, um, that instead of having that gap at the top, it bumps it up to the top of the page, saves a little space. So when you load that, now we have a background and a little tighter spacing at the top. Next thing, um, remove the header image. Um, you can take the header.php file from 2011, copy it into your child theme, and start mucking about with it. Um, there's a whole swath of code right down here that you can just pull right out. Um, let's see, the, in 2011, image, get header image, all this, let's see, to line 82 to 117, all that, out it goes. Remove the top margin, we did that. Right. Too many windows. This is what it's like, folks. <laughs> Next one, more header cleanup. So does anyone like that search box? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's already in the sidebar when you have a sidebar and it gets in the way of your other things. So I take that out. Um, there's extra spacing up there in the branding. Take that out. Um, remove the margins and that little funny line at the top. extra margins, no search box. Uh, what the search box looks like <coughs> All right. Has the text been hidden? Search.php search form get search form, all that. That makes the search box, you can take that out. Isn't this fun? <laughs> all right. So 
And that gets us kind of a bare bones header, which we can proceed to do stuff to. Styling the header. Uh, you can, in this one, I made a background that I want to show through. Um, other times you might want to make your own background image just for the header and put that in. Um, but for this transparent thing, I can't make the whole page transparent or this white stuff will go away too and you won't be able to read anything. So I need to take this bit and split it off into a separate page tag. Um, that way you can say, set the background to none there and the rest of it will stay white. Um, because this isn't a float left, uh, left justified theme like uh, 2010 was, um, if you, oh, if another really good tool for this, inspect element or firebug, you can page through where the um, code actually is. Here, name, that should be the whole page, except you, it doesn't really show. You see that green line? Um, because it's not left justified. All the stuff in it isn't, doesn't have a float, um, or it's not floated. So if you try setting just that to white, it won't show up. So here's our little trick for that. tag, body, you make a page top that goes to here. Um, always comment where your closing divs are so you can find them. Um, and that just sits on top of page and it winds up having the same basic properties so it just stacks on top. Page top here similar settings, clear both so it'll stack nicely, um, same width and everything. the logo area an ID and height, um, give the header and branding, uh, the branding div a height. That's so that we push all of that stuff down again. Um, there's a specific height to this uh, bar here. I wanted to make sure it would all line up again. And you can see that. In the code right here, branding now has that height I made. Each group have ID logo area. That way I could give that a height too. Um, some designs you'll want to fiddle with um, having menu over here, um, tagline over here, logo over here, some other configuration. This is just one possible uh, way to start laying it out. Page got a gradient background, um, and the menu bar um, gets different styling. We took that black off. So the page here. I put it in primary, I think, because that's the one you can see. No, page. So it has margin zero on the top now, and that background image. Let's see, the navigation, this is a whole 
raft of sort of complicated uh, styling. And one thing that you can do is um, sort of left click and look at the code. The other thing you can do is just sort of bring the whole excess whole hog over from 2011 and then start fiddling with the values there. <laughs> Here we set the background to transparent, um, took away those shadows because they would look misplaced in this design. Um, the lower ones we pretty much left the same. Um, you can always go back and fiddle with the colors and spacing later. Uh, one thing that it's really important to note here is the spacing between the height of the top level and where the drop downs happen. Access UL UL. Um, in order to make the drop downs appear right next to or right under um, the top level, this value has to be the same as it? access A, which is up here. So this uh, height has to be the same as that top. Otherwise, there will be a gap, and as the person tries to mouse over it, it'll lose it again, and they won't be able to select the next level. Is this too fast? Do you have any questions? Okay. It's going to get more fun. All right. Picture logo. This is one of the things I really like. It looks kind of stupid if your company name is just text and you don't have the logo there. Um, there's a nice text indent and make the logo a background thing. So it <coughs> indent the text 999 pixels that way. And it doesn't show up and all you have is a nice picture. And because you uh, create a width and height for that block, it's still clickable right there. I'm also going to move the site description down to the line it's supposed to be in. <coughs> and I'm stacking my images all in here as we go so we can do the same pointer format for each one. Branding I gave a header background to, and that's what's going to make a sort of overall um, shaded area and then their little spot icon. And then the site title A bit is where you apply this, this batch of code. Um, display block, um, give it a height and width. Uh, background, this thing, text indent, that, overflow hidden. work, um, I gave it enough of a left margin to stack up next to the other thing. So this here is our logo area right there. Now in this design, that area is pretty wide, so we're limited as to what we can put here. Uh, most things, your company logo is going to be kind of smaller.
second menu, um, a lot of sites you want to put, I call them the housekeeping links, up in the top, either on their own line or off to the right or something, the ones that say, you know, home, login, contact us, become a partner or whatever. Um, those are, I see as sort of different from about us, products, all of the kind of meat of your contents. Um, it's more like where, where to go to contact us about the company. Um, and people kind of expect now to find those in a different place. Uh, 2011 doesn't have support for a second menu yet, so we have to add it. Um, part of that's in functions, part's <coughs> in the header. Functions PHP, um, you can just create a new file for this, an empty one. Uh, start it with PHP, and then you don't have to finish the PHP thing. Um, this, register nav menus. So you have, you're restating your primary one and you're adding the secondary one. Um, a lot of the stuff, I just get the code off the internet. And if you um, Google around or if you look on wordpress.org and, and search for your question, there are a lot of good tutorials on this is the code you need, just plug it in here. Um, it, you can either name this for your, um, your name of your child theme, or you can just keep calling it 2011 until both work. Header. Now that you've got the support for it in the functions, You can stick that in here, uh, give it a div, second menu, um, access to, that's going to kind of recreate the um, styles. Um, and then this code here, uh, menu top, secondary, etc. Just put that in, you don't have to understand it all. <laughs> and then here's your original navigation here. And then in styles, Access 2 has a whole bunch of different styling because I wanted it to look smaller and uh, less important than the main body of the content. Contact us. Um, the other thing about this is you should be starting to use custom menus. Um, when you add the second menu, it'll appear in here. Um, one thing about right justifying on the upper one is sometimes it'll, uh, or I don't know off the top of my head the values that you need to make it not swap the things back to front. So here I have contact us at home, and there it swapped it. It's not really hard to set it up backward, but there is a fix if I can go look it up somewhere. Uh, and then the uh, main menu has the rest of your stuff. And you want this so that you can really um, control what goes where, rather than just having it appear whenever you create a page. And the contact us has, is soon to have the form in it. A uh, good tutorial for the um, add a second menu is this, so that will be on the, on the slides. All right, footer, it says, proudly powered by WordPress. <laughs> we like WordPress, just not right there. Our client doesn't want it, so. Uh, 
I copied the 2011 footer.php into your child theme, and you can edit the text to say what you want it to say. Lift them up here and stuck this stuff in instead. Um, I added a copyright section. That's where your company wants to say copyright our company, this date. Um, this is a nice little bit of easy code that says start on my year that I built the site and checks to see if that's the same. If it is, it just says copyright 2012. If it's 2013 already, it'll say 2013-2012-2013, and that's, you don't have to go in and update it at all. Um, let's see. And then I'm making a bottom section that's going to have my link, and it's gonna be really small and tasteful and subtle. So eventually, let's see, oh, and we can see the styling of that in a minute. These are going to be put in with a, um, a new widget area. So what we've seen so far is change that and that and that. Um, the footer, we get this nice thing with a little background image. And it keeps reloading when my swappy thing swaps. Chase that down the page every time there. Um, okay, we want to add a widget area in there too. Um, oh, the, sorry, the footer already has widgets. We're going to add some more up above. Um, put a widget in each one style as needed. They are. of those I just did the easy thing uh, made one text widget and then um, put a hard-coded an HTML um, image and link for each one um, which is not super client friendly but it's a nice easy way to do it they're probably not going to be updating this stuff that often anyway. Having just the one footer area, I, tr I tried at first doing one, two, and three, and it spaced it all off to the left kind of funny. Um, so this one you can easily style to be um, just centered. Um, or you can take those three and um, make each one a box and have one be you know, sign up for our mailing list and a bunch of others. There's a lot you can do with those. Um, all right, the text floating below the page um, with my link in it is transparent again. So we did the same little trick of create a new, um, create a new box for it. Uh, and make that transparent. The 
that's page bottom, and you see it's after the close of the page tag, so we can style that to be transparent. whole center of the page, which looks all spaced out and empty and has the weird big title and everything. Um, also, this projector thing is making my uh, contents be extra small. We want to make the default page have two columns and um, make sure more stuff fits in there. So to give the posts, um, first of all, to make the posts all have a sidebar, so not all the pages are that, that one column thing, we added the functions.php, um, remove the singular body class. This is some code, but not too much. child theme, the functions PHP is applied before the parent theme, so we need to uh, remove it in here, um, which is weird and backwards. Are those your yeah. comments, or are those comments that come with the theme, um, come automatically? These comments words? came with the tutorial that I found on the web as to how to do this particular thing. Okay, I'm sorry. So I, I just left that. them in to remind myself what it's doing. Okay. It's always a good idea. Um, so just this block. Um, remove filter body class. This seems to work. I just do it. <laughs> and the next thing you have to do is add the sidebar. Um, Single.php and page.php. There's a good um, reference chart on WordPress.org as to which templates it goes and finds first. Um, these two are sort of the basic. Those two and index on PHP are the basic ways that it builds most of your pages. Page.php didn't use to, and now it has this little extra get right before the footer. Now there's a sidebar in it. All it has so far is the search box. So I can go and start populating it with stuff. Simple section navigation is a great um, little plugin for giving you a subnav. Because if you have something like about our team, our vision, our strategy, um, you don't get a nice free um, sub-navigation system with WordPress. This is a great way to uh, put that in. Show one. Uh, here, let me grab a random one. Stick it in there and see if that appears. Oh, it's happy with that.
just that one down. All right. That wasn't so hard. And when I go to a page that has these things, hey, there it is. I also did the styles here so that when it's on a thing, um, it's a color and you can tell where you are. This plugin gives you a little um, class current page item in the LI, so you can do that. tutorial for the sidebar stuff is right there. That'll be in the notes. Um, because we put it in single.php, our news items will also have a sidebar. Another widget I really like is the Twitter posts. There's a lot of sitting around going, what? <laughs> Why is it not working? Ah. Oh, I'm a genius. I did it. <laughs> okay. So we have sidebars, and that's good. You can also use that same technique to create two sidebars for a three-column theme. Better stuff in the sidebar, the Twitter feed, the ads. Um, let's see, let's see, secondary, yeah, that's the thing that gives you the, um, Side navigation. Um, for s there are all different ways of specifying these things. My code is not necessarily the only one kind. Somebody could say, well, do you need the secondary? Do you need these other things? You can put together any kind of path or not path to get what you're trying to style um, as long as it works and makes sense. There are a bunch of different ways to do it. Another really good thing to have. Um, this looks, if you just try to do everything in a post, it winds up looking very blank. So you can take your index.php or other page um, and you can copy it into your um, child theme and call it frontpage.php and then you can start fiddling with it and adding things to it. Um, in this one, there's a thing in the top that says it's a template, so you can choose it for other pages too, if you want the other pages to look like that. Um, putting that in there means that when you are editing a page, you can, you'll be able to choose it in here. Um, make sure the spacing is right in styles. Um, Thank you. 
images in here. Right. Uh, home content, that was it. Um, the margins tend to be a little big. Um, I, I increased the width. Um, you don't need all that white space. And you can find those things in your code inspector. going to get when we edit frontpage.php is going to be this. So this is built from one of the other pages. Um, we took out the sidebar again um, and we added these three things called home boxes, which four things, which are new widget areas. Brand new widget areas. Register the sidebars in functions.php. whole bunch of code here, um, one for each sidebar area. Sidebar is just where you can put a widget. Um, each one has a unique name. Um, you can still keep the 2011 uh, name there. Um, and a unique sort of ID and description. So each one of these has to have a number or a specific name on it. Once you put those in there, see them in here and put stuff there. Um, mostly I've just been using text boxes and using them to like, put in an image or <coughs> something. You could do other nifty ones like rotating pictures or something. Um, it's just to get these nice little blocks. And this bit here is all still our post. Um, what I've done is take out the home in the quickest, dirtiest way possible by telling the style sheet not to display it. You can look up in the bottom of the pages, and that little line down the way in the bottom. And post PHP post equals five. Okay, it's five. So post five, don't display that. And I created a class big text box, which has that blue background, lots of padding, larger font size. And in the page, I made that paragraph be a div with a big text box. So now it looks cooler. And then this promo slider Excuse is me. the... Yeah. Sorry, we're out of time. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> that was the important stuff anyway. So thanks very much.